Throughout your personal and professional life, you'll encounter a variety of ethical dilemmas. In this interview with Tom Taylor, a district fire crew leader with the U.S. Forest Service, we'll examine an ethical dilemma he faced as a new squad boss early in his career. I was the squad boss on a 20-person hand crew that consisted of people from three different ranger districts. We were dispatched to a fire in the North Cascades of Washington State. Upon arriving at that fire, we were told we were going to a different fire up the road that was basically a mop-up show. So right off the bat, we were kind of bummed that we were leaving the big show to head to this mop-up show. And when we get to the fire, it's located in a steep, narrow canyon with the main fire that was pretty much out between the main road and a river. And to the east of that river was some smaller spot fires that needed to be mopped up. So we had a 20-person crew, two Mark III pumps, and about 2,500 feet of hose. The crew was split up into three squads, and my squad had six people on it, one of which I had worked one season with before, and then five rookies, fresh from guard school, from different ranger districts. And so I'd never met any of these folks before. And our objective was to anchor into the hand line, dig line around the fire, and tie in with the other squad that was going around the other side. So immediately upon uh, engagement, the fire activity increased, and so we started spraying water on it, we disengaged. And over the course of our engagement, we broke two tools, blew several, several chunks of hose, and basically abandoned the pump operation. So we went from a mop-up fire, kind of being bummed out, to being all pumped up because we actually had fire and were digging hotline, to tools breaking and hoses blowing, and as an inexperienced squad boss, I was starting to feel overwhelmed, kind of beyond my means, you know, dealing with, with things that I'd never really had to deal with before, broken tools, blown hose, inexperienced crew members, increased fire behavior. Uh, we had another squad show up, and I was very relieved to see them because I could kind of ditch my squad off on them and hide in the back, maybe patrol the line and watch and learn how the squad boss handles these situations so A, I can learn from this and B, I can not have that stress level on my shoulders. Well, the crew boss trainee ordered that squad to go around to the other side of the fire and start building fire line over there. So here I am kind of deflated again, being not really forced back into the squad leader position but, but having to, to uh, learn in an environment that I'm, I'm not used to working in. And about that time, we had a flare-up that separated the SAW team from us. And I was a little nervous about that because their egress had, had been uh, cut off and they were all, unable to get to the escape route. So when the fire, the flare-up died down a little bit, <clears throat> I was able to go and grab them, bring them back with the squad. And at that time, a combination of fatigue my lack of experience and kind of being overwhelmed, I felt that we should disengage our side of the fire. So I called the crew boss trainee and he came over and we had a discussion and he informed me that if we could hook this fire and start flanking it, that we'd be able to tie the hand line into the river. And he said we could do this if I took the saw and he watched my squad. And here I am, I'm pumped up again, I'm totally stoked. It's like, all right, I don't have to watch my squad anymore. I can just be a sawyer, which is what I know. So I gladly accepted the assignment, started cutting saw line. I ran out of fuel, went to fuel up. I noticed that the crew boss trainee was gone and I was missing two squad members. So here I am kind of deflated again. I hunt down the two two crew members that were actually putting out a spot fire and once they secured the spot fire we got the squad back together and I had no choice but to be a squad boss and a sawyer so I continued with the saw line till I got to the river and then I grabbed my Pulaski went back to the crew and we continued with the hand line and we had to uh, turn away from the main fire and go <clears throat> indirect due to the fire behavior 
and we made it to the river and everything was good and we high-fived and I walked the hand line back to the anchor point, walked back to the river and at that time we had about a hundred spots over our line and the main fire had burned across the portion that we had gone indirect on. And I called the crew boss trainee, let him know of our situation and told him that we were going to disengage and hike across the river and we would meet him on the road.